Doctors of Reddit, what was your worst, I don't think this is important but, patient? Had a male in his 50s walk into trauma to have his left thigh stitched up. Not an uncommon wound in an agricultural area. Speaking to him while stitching him up he tells me he fell off a ladder while cutting a branch and the machete sliced him on the way down. Told him I was going to write him up for an x-ray of the entire leg just in case. He kept on saying he was fine, his knee hurt a bit but logically that was from the fall. I agreed, but asked him to go to the x-ray department just in case. He reluctantly walked there and back. X-rays showed a helical fracture almost the entire length of his femur. Besides being a dangerous fracture the femur is supposed to be the most painful bone to break and he was walking around. In the end I had to show him the break to get him to sit down on a wheelchair and into the hands of orthopedics. That man's pain tolerance still impresses me. Intercepted a young woman who was just hit by a car. Her boyfriend was standing with her freaking out. I do a basic physical exam and get a history, and make her comfortable as we wait for the ambulance to arrive. Once the ambulance arrives they ask for the same information, except this time the boyfriend mentions he was the one who was actually hit by the car and was shielding his girlfriend's body. The entire car's windshield was cracked by the impact of his back. He was just freaking out and worried about her, and was in shock and hadn't begun to feel any pain yet. Had a patient come into the ER with some sort of spider slash bug bite on her hand that had progressed to a red line running up her arm. She stated she put Benadryl cream on and it was very itchy. We continued talking and I asked if she had any allergies. Yes, Benadryl. I thought, good lord, what, and I'm sure it was reflected on my face. We washed the Benadryl cream off her arm and miraculously it stopped itching. I had a headache, and a few hours later noticed that my irises were different sizes. I went reluctantly to the emergency room. Minutes after presenting myself I had neurologists looking at me and I was rushed to get scanned. The artery about an inch and a half below my brain had torn. The DRS were basically just waiting for me to have a stroke. I didn't. Somehow. I once checked in a guy and asked him if he'd had any previous surgery. He said, no, never. When I examined him he had a surgical scar from just above his pubic bone, to just below the sternum. What's that then? I asked. He stared down at it and said, I've never noticed that before. What? Emergency radiologist here. I see plenty of people presenting with understated symptoms that turn out to be mind-blowing advanced disease. The saddest one was probably the four-year-old boy who presented with a rigid abdomen for a few months. Was told by their pediatrician it was constipation months ago but his parents never followed up when it didn't resolve. When I imaged his abdomen I found his entire liver was replaced with a mass consistent with hepatoblastoma, liver tumor. I asked the parents why they waited so long to work it up. They said they were satisfied with the diagnosis of constipation. That one left a mark on my soul. I was working in an area with lots of Mennonites. A mom once called into the clinic because a wheel had broken and one of the spokes had penetrated her toddler's eye. The reason for the call was to ask if he needed to be seen by a doctor. She indicated they had removed the spoke and she knew he was going to lose the eye, so was there really a reason for him to be seen? The answer was yes. This 20s guy came into the hospital. He had a lot of conditions where he wouldn't make it past 40 and he currently had some infection. We kept giving him antibiotics which helped, but not as much as we would have liked. After about a week of being in the hospital I walk in and I'm talking to him and he tells me that he got a medically necessary circumcision on his last admission to the hospital. I ask if it's okay if I take a look to make sure it's healing okay. It was black with all kinds of infection. I'm just not sure how a 20s married man, or his wife, never thought to tell anyone about this for the past week. One of my first patients as a medical student. We were asking her about prior medical history because she was on a wait list for an intestinal transplant, and we asked her in every possible way if she had any history and she was like, no, I was very healthy before this. Finally we ask her if she has any medications at home and she goes, oh, just the meds I take for the lupus. Everyone at my company knows the story of the patient who came in for genetic counseling, went through their whole family history with the counselor, and then concluded with, oh yeah, I was adopted as a baby and don't know who my birth parents are, does that matter? Did a bunion and hammer toe surgery on a lady with no allergies. New patient packet, primary care note all had no known allergies. I always ask about metal allergy anytime I plan on putting in hardware. Surgery goes great. I'm on call for the practice and receive a phone call for the group 18 hours post-operation. 
her nerve block had worn off and she was in excruciating pain, so I give instructions on what to do. Next morning she is in my office before I even arrive. 10 out of 10 pain, sweating profusely, blood pressure elevated, foot is massive. Clearly not faking it. I have to send her to the hospital for intractable pain. Her blood work indicates elevated eosinophils but everything else normal. No blood clot or infection. The hospitalist is convinced that it's complex regional pain syndrome. I rack my brain and think of what could be going on. I am only 5 months out of residency. My butt is puckering so hard. Since eosinophils elevated, ask if she is allergic to jewelry? Yeah, my tongue swelled up when I had it pierced. I had it removed the next day. She had a nickel allergy. No allergist will see her to confirm so this is all speculation but makes sense with the hardware I used. Once the hardware was removed and exchanged for titanium, her pain resolved. There was one case in my residency of hardware allergy, one of 3,000 cases I was first or second assist on. If I did not scrub into that case, I don't know if I would have figured this out so quickly. Crazy case. Now I always ask, have you ever had any reactions to jewelry? A lot of patients won't tell you about problems with jewelry and may not know they have metal allergies. While pregnant with me, my mom was wrapping up an OB appointment. The GYN had already left the room, mom was gathering herself to leave and mentioned to the nurse her contacts were messing with her, she had spots in her vision. The nurse stopped and asked her to sit down. Brought back in the GYN, who had her stay and deliver me via emergency C-section. Without anyone knowing it, she had spontaneously developed preeclampsia and her blood pressure was rocketing sky high. She was dangerously close to having a seizure and it would have been that if she hadn't mentioned the spots in her vision and just left as the appointment was over, or the nurse didn't listen. While I was a psychiatry resident, I did a graded 30-minute interview on front of my attending on a new patient without knowing any previous chart history. I spent 29 minutes collecting high-yield medical and psychiatric history, and since I had an extra minute to spare, decided to ask him more about his childhood. Well, it was pretty shitty after I watched my dad murder my mom and then off himself. Needless to say, I did not have enough time to unpack that and failed my exam. Had a guy in his 50s who had been seeing an acupuncturist for an area of numbness and weakness traveling down his legs. He'd had two months of acupuncture for them with no improvement, so very reluctantly booked a routine general practitioner's appointment. At that point he'd stared to have issues with his urination too. As soon as I started speaking to him it became obvious that the symptoms he presented with were consistent with spinal cord compression, an absolute medical emergency. We got him straight into hospital and imaging showed cancer, with a tumor pressing onto his spinal column. Although he started treatment and steroids that day, by then it was too late. He lost the ability to walk and died a few months later from the cancer. It was enormously sad and frustrating as that constellation of symptoms would have raised an immediate red flag with anyone with medical training. Had he come in months earlier, maybe his prognosis would have been quite different. I had to take out the remainder of this guy's teeth. He was in his 60s and told us verbally and on his health history that he didn't take any meds. So I took out his last eight teeth, all easy extractions due to infections and periodontal disease. But I couldn't get him to stop bleeding. I asked him again if he was taking anything. I finally got the clot stabilized, but it took almost an hour and I had to consult our oral surgeon. When he saw the oral surgeon a few months later about placing implants, he told the oral surgeon he was on blood pressure medication and blood thinners. I refused to see him anymore after that. Had to perform an extraction, took a detailed medical history. Patient said they were a diabetic and a hypertensive. Both a big contraindication in extractions due to uncontrollable bleeding. Unless they're meticulous about their taking their medicines and you stop the blood thinners five days prior to surgery, it's usually a bloodbath. I asked the well-educated, 50-year-old woman a number of times if she took her diabetes medicines on time and if she does at home rapid tests to check her blood sugar. She said she takes them every day without fail and hasn't missed a day in over two years. She said she's super disciplined about her health and would tell me if she hadn't taken them. I sent her in for a rapid blood sugar test anyway, as a precaution, and lo and behold her values come back as 282 mg. Almost twice as much as the normal value so it wasn't even like she was just off the mark. I ask her to explain and she gives a shocked expression and insisted that she took them. I ask her to physically show me her medicines instead of listing them out and she finally says, oh, I don't have it right now. I make it when I need it. She drinks bitter gourd juice on time every day instead of her diabetic pills because they are too big. And she 100% believed bitter gourd juice was the only medication she needs. 
She's a high school teacher. I was an internal medicine resident who had a patient come to my clinic for persistent flu. I had never seen her before, and she was a healthy appearing woman in her 60s. About a month before seeing me, she was seen by her primary care provider with persistent coughing, and otherwise had no shortness of breath or other infectious symptoms. Just a dry cough. She got tested for flu and was negative, but got Tamiflu just in case it was a false negative. She had a chest x-ray which was normal. She came to me a month later because her cough persisted despite completing her therapy. Everything sounded great. Heart, lungs, everything. To be honest I don't usually do this, but something in my gut told me to feel for lymph nodes. I felt around and found something above her left clavicle. It was hard, round, and she was completely unaware of it. I told her it was probably a reactive lymph node, but just in case, I wanted to get an ultrasound. This cascaded into her getting a biopsy, which showed squamous cell lung cancer. A CT scan showed stage 4 lung cancer, not seen on her chest x-ray. All diagnosed because of a lymph node that almost by chance I was lucky enough to find by being thorough. I checked her chart about a year ago, and she was doing well. She got therapy and was in remission after a very long road and many obstacles. I'll never forget her or her case. When I was four years old my mom thought that it was weird how I could describe what I see of one part of the environment and not the other especially because according to her I was a happy child and didn't report any sight issue. She brings me to the doctor, afraid that I may have an intellectual disability. Turns out one of my eyes is totally blind. Saw a dude in my ER once for a sore throat. He was coughing a bit when I went in. Looked in his throat and his uvula, hanging thingy in the middle, was just a tiny bit swollen but everything else looks okay. I asked about medication and he mentioned that he just started a blood thinning medicine that had a nasty side effect of face and airway swelling. Long story short, we put a scope down his throat and saw swelling around his vocal cords and put in a breathing tube to keep his airway open. <laughs>